Welcome back to Watching Film. My name is Seth Varnador. I'm a former high school and college football coach that's now just a civilian and likes to get on here and look at stuff I find interesting, break down schemes of things that that kind of intrigue me in college football. One of the more interesting hires this past offseason, I thought, was Josh Heupel being hired by Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee went from a primarily defensive coach to Heupel, who was uh, the head coach at UCF, where they had awesome offenses that could run the ball and throw the ball. Um, before that, he was, I think, the offensive coordinator at Missouri with Drew Locke, and they had some really good offenses, and he was able to take that success and kind of grow it at UCF uh, in the American Conference. I got to watch Heupel pretty closely the last two years because I was covering USF. So I have to here, I did a preview of every game, uh, offense and defense. So I've combined my two previews from 2019 and 2020 of the UCF offense, going through run game, uh, a little bit of RPO stuff, play action stuff, and then the passing game, just traditional drop back passing. And kind of taking a look at why are they so successful? What do they do? You know, it, it's just real quick overview. It's a great combination of, of creative scheme and tempo. So if you're a Tennessee fan, if you're an SEC fan, and you want to kind of see what kind of offense Hypo is going to be bringing to Rocky Top, check this out. Uh, word of warning, these, these were recorded with sleeping infants nearby. So forgive the subdued nature of some of these, but. I think you'll enjoy uh, the look at the X's and O's and a little bit of UCS personnel and seeing how this will apply to Tennessee this season. So we'll, we'll kind of start with the run game and kind of show you how they evolve the run game and how they kind of transition that into their passing game through RPOs, play action, and then just straight drop back. So we'll start with kind of the basic split zone. So you'll see this look a lot where you got like 11 personnel look and you have the H back here. So this is just going to be your kind of normal split zone with your H backer tight end coming to kick out. So they use this split zone to kind of set up a lot of different things. So there's a kick, back makes a good read, and they're not a team that you can totally load the box up against and disregard the pass because they are so good outside. So that's just straight split zone. So nothing fancy, just kind of the normal split zone. Line does a pretty good job. I think their tempo catches people misaligned sometimes. They're able to pop some big runs on what are pretty simple plays. This is just kind of a regular split zone, inside zone. and Back makes a good cut. And there's a huge hole there. I think part of it is because of how fast they go. Let it roll through here. So you've kind of combined here what looks like a split zone, so a normal split zone. Incoming, kicking out, back going opposite. You got the tight end or H-back coming to kick out the end man. So you do the same thing here. So for the linebackers, it looks exactly the same. And now you're running counter action to it, pulling the guard and tackle. And that's a really tough read for linebackers. Sometimes they're key in the the counter, the pulling action. Sometimes they're key in the split flow action. It just really makes it tough. And you see here, you get a couple guys out of position, and they break out for a touchdown. And a big play, and a great run by Otis Anderson, who's a pretty good player. So here's a different play, but... So now it's the same formation. It kind of catches the snap late, but now they're going to run like a more like a lead or an ISO play. Same formation. So the same the same kind of pre-snap look, but now instead of instead of him coming all the way across here, he's just going to lead now. So you're not quite sure where they're coming from. Then the back makes a great cut and is really explosive and takes it the distance with just a sliver of space. But again, that's the same kind of pre-snap look. So you have split zone, you have kind of a leader ISO, and now they're gonna run basically, it looks to me like a same side 
counter. So they're going to counter. So typically, right, a lot of teams are going to counter. If they want to involve this guy, they bring that guard and they would have him be the rap guy. They're actually going to, so they've already shown this and that. All right, so split zone. And so now they're going to almost combine it here. So counter, like we said, if he was going that way, you'd have the guard here. Typically, he'd be kicking out the end man, and this guy would be wrapping to that side. You typically go opposite the H-back if you're involving the H-back in the blocking scheme. Well, one wrinkle they use that's really interesting is they're going to bring him to the same side. So you're going to have the pull here. He's going to kick down, down. He's going to come across almost like a split zone and then follow back, wrap through. So it's still counter. It's just bringing it from the same side now. So right here, kick the in man. And now come through the same side. And again, you have these backs, and that's a different guy than the previous time. So you've seen three plays, 24 on the first one, two on the second one. Here's nine on the third one. Like I said, it, it seems like those guys can take it a distance, any one of them, anytime they touch it. Well, here's three plays of proof, I guess. But this is just same side counter. So this is a kind of an interesting wrinkle that I haven't seen a ton. I think them running it last year may have been the first time I saw it. So this is kind of an interesting run game wrinkle. And they hit Temple with it earlier, or I'm sorry, this is later in the game for an uh, even bigger run. So again, you get the guard coming. Down, down, down. Guard kicks here. And with, with this, with how Temple plays, you're going to get a lot of flow over the top here. And now you get him coming back that way. For a bit to break a big run. You got the safety out of position right there. And now he's going to take off. So again, it's just a wrinkle off the split zone. So they have the ice off the split zone. They have the same side counter, which is really interesting. Really cool look. They also do, it looks like, uh, both guards pulling. So like uh, old school buck sweep. I think they kind of have different runs in depending on what fronts they're going to get. And another one where you give their back just a sliver of space. They don't need a lot of space and they're going to go. So there's another, so this one's out of a spread look. So a two by two, maybe 10 personnel, or even if it's 11, they're spread out. Lighten the box for themselves. And now I'll pull two guards, but it's kind of the same idea. One's kicking the end, one's wrapping. So you kick the backer, wraps inside, doesn't get a great block, but gets enough of them to give that back a crease. So some pretty interesting stuff in the run game. And then when they get down inside the red zone, or especially down inside the 10 here, they'll bring in the backup quarterback, and they'll do some funky stuff, some wildcat type stuff, single wing type stuff. But here they have an overload, like we kind of saw Memphis do a version of last week. So here's your tight end H-back. Then you got one, two, three receivers. So I got four to a side, technically five to a side. With the tail back there. Pump the H back out. And he's a pretty good runner, so he can kind of find the hole there. So you'll, you'll see this, and then they'll, wor they'll work in some passes off this too, where he'll kind of sneak out of the flat, and he'll roll and uh they, they've done that in a couple games so they'll throw out of this too it's not just a, it's not a hundred percent run but it's something you might see if they get down inside the 10 little backup quarterback and here's kind of this is just like you know even if it's not blocked perfectly this play is designed to hit over here not too different than the dart play we're going to see uh in a second where they're pulling the tackle but they're pulling the guard here and he just cuts it back. This was not definitely not designed this way, and the receivers do a good job blocking downfield. Well, that's just 
a guy making a play and being explosive and being able to kind of anytime you touch it, you got a chance to score. And they got a few of those guys on the team. So it's going to be a, definitely a tough task for the USF defense. So here's another scheme they like to run. Dart, they ran this against Cincinnati quite a few times. Where you're pulling the backside tackle. They ended up coming out here because they're running. They're going to run an RPO with it. We'll see the give first, then we'll kind of look at the RPO. So the quarterback's reading it. Here he's got a give read. Back bounces it for like a 15-yard gain here. Good run, but they're reading this. So you've seen kind of the variety of runs they do. So now that's – you just saw the dart give. Here's the dart when they pull it. So if you look in here, you get started a little bit late, but here's the tackle coming around to pull. Quarterback's looking in this area. He likes this hitch, so he takes it. This is something we saw USF try to go to a little bit against Memphis. The problem is Memphis didn't give this kind of cushion because they didn't think USF was going to run by him. So you've got a guy up there. It makes it a little bit tougher. Whereas they have to give cushion because these guys can run by him. And again, we'll see the same thing here. Tackle's pulling right here. I don't know if the quarterback's reading him or if he's reading the depth of the safety, but probably him. If he comes inside here, I can whip it out there and make that throw really easily. Pick up five or six, just no problem. So not only will they do RPO stuff, they'll get they'll just do straight play action stuff. So here's just a shot, and their receivers can really go and get it. Um, this is 16 here, I think Nixon. They have Davis, 13, who's a really good player too. Um, and six is a really good player too. You'll see they've got three really good receivers. Not they don't make mistakes or ever drop balls, but they they also do stuff like this where they just go up and get it. Quarterback doesn't have the best arm. He's pretty accurate, but he does not have a cannon. This ball is, it hangs in the air for a long time. But they got the receivers that can go and get it. So kind of another one off play action. They could they could RPO this too. Here, I think it's just straight play action, but double slant. Uh, you'll see guys RPO uh, sl double slant on the backside of zone. You can really just inside out it here. If it's not RPO, which here it's just straight play action, but inside out, he takes the inside one, outside one should open up. It's kind of how you taught to read it. So they like to run this in a variety of looks. So here's just straight. This is just straight drop back. They like the quick game stuff, I think. Their quarterback's pretty good with the quick game. Getting the ball out of his hands, the receivers do a good job of getting open. Here you'll see the receiver invites him up outside. Does a nice arm over on the corner to get himself open. Gets him to open up his hips. Arm over. Slam on the brakes. Get inside. And then... When you run those slants enough and you got really explosive players, this may happen every now and then. Catch it. Corner doesn't take a great angle. And then I'm gone. So they'll run the hitches. They'll run the slants. Then not only can they take a slant to the house, but then they'll also, like they do here at the Temple, they'll go slant and go. They do this on both sides, so... Both sides are kind of kind of come in and then vertical. Sell the double slant and get vertical. And the same thing's happening down here off screen. Quarterback kind of goes away from, I guess, the deep safety or tries to hold him. Comes back, makes a really accurate throw here to his receiver for a touchdown. But it's really, I think they're, why I say I think they're mostly predicated on the running game is they're trying to get as much as they can in the passing game one-on-one -on -one matchups. As much as they can get you isolated to where you have to make a tackle in space. Uh, you can't load up, you know, you're going to have to leave guys in the box to stop the run game so that's less guys out uh, in coverage. This is just here simple. Looks to me like a simple curl flat. 
He's going to run a deep curl. He's going to motion and become the flat guy. So you really have curl here, and he's kind of taking guys away, trying to open up the curl window, but he himself pops open, and the quarterback hits him on the run here. So, he, I mean, you're thinking this guy can kind of take away, possibly take some defenders out of the curl window. But he's, the quarterback's going to hit him on the run here, and he's going to break a tackle. So right here, just, he's just getting in this window, trying to open this up. The flat is trying to take him out for the deep curl coming behind it. They bring a blitz and open this window up for the quarterback. He does a good job getting out of his hands. Then right here, break a tackle and go. So the scheme, the kind of the scheme and the quarterback get you the first down here. Well, then your player making a, a play, breaking the tackle, and uh, breaking a couple tackles, that kind of gets you the touchdown. So, you know, this is where the individual explosive players having those kind of guys is really valuable. They can take first downs and turn them into touchdowns. And UCF's got quite a few of those guys. Just another one where they'll start in a three-by-one here. They're going to motion the back out here, and now they're going to get him one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. So at the bottom of the screen, they're just going to run, looks like like a stick, like a version of stick. And up top, he's got a slant, and he's one-on-one, -on -one, so the quarterback kind of already knows where I'm going with the ball. It's really, actually down here, it's really just verticals. So they'll do this to where they're kind of, It looks like they're almost just trying to isolate one or two guys. So right here, you have he's isolated one-on-one -on -one in a tough route. He's isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody else is almost clearing out, it looks like. There are times where it looks like there's guys that are decoys. There's something Baylor used to do under Bryles. Um, and it's something maybe they do. There's a play I see late that we're going to show you later that I think they they do some of that where maybe one guy one guy's live, everybody else is dead, and one guy's going to run a route because they know they're going to get the matchup. So right there, just motion your back out, get him one on one linebacker, and this guy plays in the slot anyway sometimes. So it's basically functionally another receiver on a linebacker, and then again, the scheme gets you the scheme gets your guy one on one, which is great. But right here. That's a five yard gain, which is a good, you know, good play on first down. Five yards is great. But then you break a tackle, you make a guy miss, and now a five yard gain turns into a fifty yard gain or more. And that's kind of the individual, those individual explosive guys. So this one struck me as kind of a Baylor kind of uh kind of example. Watch the guys up here aren't really doing anything. They're kind of just jogging. He's gonna run off. But really, right here is a one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to do a good job of kind of sticking with him, and then he breaks free uh, to the slant. And then again, breaks the tackle. Doesn't get tripped up. But this is really, I mean, you can look up top. These guys aren't really doing anything. So this is kind of that Baylor where one guy's live. Not a difficult read for the quarterback. He's probably... You know, if I get blitz, maybe I got the slant. If I don't, I can throw this go route up here or try to hit this in a window here. But he makes it easy. Not a perfect throw, but their receivers are really good. So even though the throw's behind me, I'm going to catch it. won't get tripped up and take it in for a touchdown. And then, and then that's, you know, they'll try to get um, Davis isolated backside. So here... The safety comes down with the play action. They're just going to run kind of a little skinny post, a little glance. And there's no safety there because of the play action. Just a nice, easy throw. All right, so you say nice, easy pitch and catch for a big play. That's an easy, that's an easy explosive play right there. And then here's kind of the same thing. They'll get Davis matched up one-on-one -on -one out here, so you try to blitz them. And when the quarterback's on and accurate, 
those guys are going to be really tough to stop. Here's just kind of an example of, you know, I think they they run a lot of the Baylor vertical choice stuff, but a lot of it is getting a guy isolated and getting him some catch and run. Here you can see just an unbelievable job of keeping your balance here and just kind of the explosive guys they have. He's probably not – he's not one of their more explosive guys here, number six. He's a really good player, really good route runner, really savvy, gets himself open a lot, and a really good run after catch. Maybe not the fastest guy on the team, but he's going to pick up a lot of yards just with his good run after the catch ability. Coming right back to him here on the post, and this is where you can kind of see Dylan Gabriel's accuracy. You get a little bit of a push there, but there's not a big window to fit that ball in over that guy's hand. A great throw. Um, when he's when Gabriel's on, he's one of the most accurate guys in the country. Not the strongest arm, but really, really accurate. And can make you pay with all the weapons he's got around him. Here's against Cincinnati. One of the best defensive uh, backfields in the country, especially, uh, especially at corner. And here you see them going straight after them early in the game. Go right down the sideline. Gabriel puts it up. 87 is a big, tall receiver. They can go up and get it. So they're not afraid to take shots. So this was not, by explosiveness rate, this wasn't one of the top teams in the country. But when you're looking at pure, you know, 20-plus yard plays, these they are number one in, 20 in plays of 20-plus yards. They will just keep taking shots and keep taking shots and keep taking shots. And... When they connect, they score, and they score quickly. And if you give them the ball in your short fields, they can start rolling on you. So you really have to play discipline. But you see here, you know, you've got kind of, he's kind of walking off. He's basically got kind of a slot fade. So he might have the choice, and then backside, he's just going to kind of win on an inside route. Could be kind of a deep slant. He posts, he kind of just wins and could just be a dig. And again, you see that run after catch ability against a really good Cincinnati defense. And these were some really well designed plays. Something they like to do in the red zone is they'll switch release. So, kind of natural rubs, or maybe he'll come in here and then I'll rub and switch off, right? So, they basically they do that a lot. They know Cincinnati's game plan for that. So they kind of go in just like we're going to do the switch release. They get the corn, they get this nickel back or safety to jump over the top, thinking we're going to get some type of cross. And he actually comes back inside, and the outside guy stays outside. And you get a really interesting look at it here. Really, really well designed play here in the red zone. Looks like for a split second right here. I'm going to go underneath. Nope. He jumps out. Thinking he's going to come there. Like they do a lot. But instead, he gives a little nod. He's gone. And now I go back into all this space. And then he ends up passing it off to the corner. But it's over. You've already got a lot, so much inside position there. Really, really, really interesting play. So not only do they just take shots with really athletic explosive guys but they got some really interesting stuff this is a great change up to rub routes and switch releases in the red zone really really creative really cool totally has the defense fooled here and then for the two point play after this another really creative something you're seeing a lot uh, it's kind of trickled down from New England with Tom Brady did it a lot it's kind of trickled into college football You'll see the motion man come in. And they'll just run a quick screen throw to him and try to get him in there real fast. Not worry so much about the corner. Just block straight ahead and get that quick screen. That's a really common play in, in short yardage. You've seen teams all over the country run it. Uh, UCS going to do a little wrinkle to it. Kind of like a bubble go. A lot of teams run. They're basically doing it internally. He's going to come in like just like the screen. They're going to come off like they're going to block both these guys. 
and then they're going to slip to the end zone here. Another really cool change, a really good design here. Like we're going to block the screen. You see he's already trying to beat him across face. He's showing his hands, helping sell it. He's already trying to beat him in, in here. And then, whoop, slip him to the here. And then, so he slips to the back of the end zone for an easy conversion. But you're actually going to slip him out almost to the corner. So in case this corner runs with it. You know, if the cornerback would have run, would have ran with the motion here. So if that cornerback would have come in with the motion, you have the corner out there. And then he slips it to the middle field. So you got two options for the quarterback. Really well designed play off of that screen fake. So you get an offense that's got a lot of really good skilled players. You got a really accurate quarterback. And then you add in interesting designs like you see there in the passing game. It makes them really hot, tough to stop. And then they also will devote a lot of time to the running game. Run it a lot of different ways. You see the creativity at the beginning. Mick combining split flow zone with the counter scheme in an interesting way. It really makes it tough on the defense. And they'll probably combine that with an RPO and really get you on your heels. There are really that awesome Star Wars wipe means we are at the end of the video. I think you can see watching this that Heupel's really creative on offense. He's got a good mind in both the running and the passing game. Combine that with his tempo and you get these huge numbers. If he can find the right quarterback, I think they can make a quick jump because they have some talent on that offense still. Um, if not, it may be longer, but I think Tennessee has a bright future on offense. Heupel's biggest question, in my opinion, is going to be can he recruit at this level. He was not great. At UCF, but if he surrounded himself with some good recruiters, then that could fix itself. But he's got a long road to hoe with the tough schedule he has every year. If you like this kind of video where I get more in-depth on um, the scheme of college football, subscribe. I'll be trying to put these out um, hopefully weekly as the season comes uh, through here pretty soon. Uh, but anything that I kind of find that interests me and piques my interest schematically in the college game, I'm going to try to break down here. Some will be quick, some will be long like this one. Uh, but if you like it, subscribe and uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Seth Warner. Sometimes I'll put shorter stuff out there. Let's get ready for college football.